Hey guys, my name is Nick. I'm a Microsoft Certified Expert Administrator. I create a lot of content for MSPs, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys Windows 10 Autopilot Hybrid Join. So I've created another video specifically going around the fundamentals of Windows 10 Autopilot and the basic configuration, um, mostly encompassing uh, Azure AD employment. Uh, but for the MSP space in the SMB market, I feel like hybrid join is, is a very powerful component that you would want to implement across many of your customers as you transition to the cloud. So here's a basic diagram of what this looks like from an architecture standpoint. Um, but basically, we have the ability to join devices both to Azure AD and push them down into our local environment as well too. So this way, while you're transitioning to the cloud, you could still use uh, the local environment for group policy objects that you want to push out, but also slowly start to move into Intune for device management. So a couple of different scenarios which this encompass, which uh, would be when you order the devices from a supported OEM provider, uh, you can upload the hardware IDs, and when you put those up, if you've pre-configured the things that we're going to go through as far as the demo in this video for hybrid join, you can immediately push those down uh, to the local domain. The other of which is if you have existing devices uh, that you've joined to Intune, um, you can additionally push those down and vice versa. You can push up devices into Azure Active Directory. Um, only problem with the hybrid from the local environment up to the cloud is the fact that uh, you still do have to grab the hardware IDs from those existing devices in order to enroll them into Autopilot. We'll be going through all of this here today. Um, so uh, basically what I wanted to get into here from an agenda standpoint, we're going to go over some of the requirements for hybrid Azure AD join. We're going to go through all the local steps that you need to take in your local DC and then all the cloud steps within the Endpoint Manager portal, and that's all going to be encompassed within the demo. So to give you guys a better picture, a uh, common scenario of an MSP, you guys have, you know, uh, let's say, you know, handful of customers, 1,800 end users across uh, your customer environment with about 2 to 3% uh, employee churn. You have customer applications at each customer location. Most of those locations have a local Active Directory environment with group policies set up. Use ConnectWise for your RMM software, use Dell as your OEM provider, and use WebRoot for your AnyVirus. So with Autopilot, um, you have the ability to pre-configure all your policies, your applications, um, your settings, everything like that, and immediately push those down to the devices themselves. So it's a pretty powerful, um, powerful setup that you can have from an IP, I, perspective and also a end user perspective but one of these big things that uh, I consider right now while you perform change management task and work your way from your local environment to moving fully to the cloud is the ability to hybrid join these devices down to the local directory so not only are you slowly uh, transitioning versus having to do a holistic deployment um, you can have this hybrid scenario where the, the computer is still going to have all the policies pushed out from the local domain uh, but you can begin to slowly manage it from maybe an application standpoint or some of the policies within Intune you can start to push down and things of that nature. So some of the requirements that you'll need to have set up before you can do this that I'm not going to be showing in this video. Uh, one is just having Active Directory Connect in place. Um, so the basic sync has already been done. We'll be running through the wizard again to configure additional settings, but that is something that you have to have going in the environment. Uh, the DC itself has to be Windows Server 2016 or higher, and then the devices enrolled into Autopilot need to be on version Windows 10 version 1809 or later. So let's go ahead and pop into the test tenant that I have here. And so this is the 365 portal. I have Microsoft 365 Business set up here. And um, this is on the cloud side of things that we'll, we'll need to come in and configure. I actually do want to start in the local environment, though, uh, to show you some of the settings that we'll need to configure here. So this is my DC, which is already syncing the users up to the 365 portal. Um, and what I've done here and what you'll want to plan out is the OU that you want to be syncing for this uh, autopilot service and then also the hybrid join computers. 
So whenever you think about this, you know, you got to think about GPO inheritance and things of that nature that you want to customize. It may not just be the defaulted computers OU here that you want to use for this service. It may be one that you want to pre-populate. If you have certain uh, users you want to run in hybrid or ones that you want to keep solely in the local environment there. So um, I've gone ahead and already created this new OU for uh, autopilot, and this is where we're going to be doing the hybrid join um, and also pushing devices down that do join the autopilot service. The one thing that we need to do here is just add some delegated permissions uh, to allow user or computer creation in this particular OU. So you go through this wizard here and you're going to click on add under users and groups. Under object types, make sure you check box computers. And in here, I'm just going to type the name of my DC. It's going to pull it up here. And um, it's giving me permission to go ahead uh, as a scope for this particular DC to create computers. We'll want to create a custom task delegation here, or task to delegate. Um, and then we're going to say computer objects under the objects in this folder. And we're going to say create and delete. Click next. You'll leave this top part how it is here. If you checkbox full control, it'll checkbox everything else for you. You'll click on next and you'll click on finish. So that'll give us permission to write down to this particular OU. Um, so that's what you need to do in the users and computers section. Again, plan out how your architecture is going to look, if there's any special considerations with which OU you want this to join, and then perform those tasks there. So that's everything that we needed to do here. The next thing we need to do is install the Intune connector. So I've launched the 365 Admin Center here, and I've gone ahead and opened up the Endpoint Manager portal. And what you'll want to do is go under the Devices section and then go to Windows 10. And here we're going to click on Windows Enrollment. And we're going to click on the Intune Connector for Active Directory. Now I had already pre-installed this on this one. I uninstalled it, which is why I have the error status here. But you can click on Add. And um, this is what we're already doing here. Uh, so we just want to download the actual executable here and this will launch as soon as that's done and we'll just run through this wizard and just click on install so we need to install Active Directory by signing in with a license account with the global administrator that looks a little janky but um, I want to pick my global administrator for this tenant. Okay, and then I think because I already did this that uh, it already picked up on my credentials, but you just have to put in your password there for the global administrator to finish that up. Um, and this takes a couple of minutes but we should see this pop up here with a uh, green status here in a minute. So we'll come back to this um, next thing time, 935. Yeah, we'll come back to this here in a few minutes. Um, the other piece that you need to do is go into your group policy editor. And what we're gonna do, you can create a new GPO um, or use the default domain policy. But basically, we need to target all the domain computers within uh, the Active Directory environment, encompassing also our OU that we created. So just make sure all that exists there. But you'll click on Edit on whatever group policy that you have scoped out appropriately. Under Computer Configuration, you're going to go under Preferences. I'm sorry, under Policies. You go under Administrative Templates. And under Windows Components, you'll scroll to you see Device Registration. And then Register Domain Join Computers as Devices. You can double click on that. I've already got it enabled here, but you'll want to make sure you turn this on. Um, and this is just you know talking about getting a registered device with Azure Active Directory as well. So you want to turn that on there. The next thing that you want to do um, really is open up let me see if this is updated at all. 
Yeah, there we go. All right, so we got this active as well now too. Um, and it's got the new date, but that's good. That's what I wanted to see there. So one of the last pieces you need to do in uh, the portal here is go and open up Azure AD Connect. There's a couple different settings that we're going to need to configure here. Uh, the first of which, what I like to do is, um, if you've created a new OU that you're not syncing, go ahead and do that. Uh, so we'll go ahead and sign in here. I'll get my MFA code. Push notification. All right, and then we've got our directory here. And then I'll expand, and I want to make sure that I grab that OU that I created. Click on Next. And we'll let this go through. And we're going to start that process, yes. So this will run through here. And the big thing, um, we have multiple tasks that we need to do within this wizard. Um, I would wait like five, 10 minutes in between each one uh, just to be safe because otherwise it'll tell you that the, the synchronization service is still running. I um, mean, you just need to let it complete fully before you uh, do that. So we'll click on exit here. I'm going to pause for a brief second and come back in just a few minutes. Okay, so we're back here and we've reopened the wizard. I'm going to go ahead and click on configure. This time we're going to click on configure device options and click on next. So you see here we have two options here, hybrid Azure AD join and then device right back as well too. Uh, so what we want to do is click on next here. Again, we're going to have to authenticate with our global credentials. And again, it's going to prompt me for MFA. Prove that. All right, and then here, what we're going to want to do is configure hybrid Azure AD join first. And here, we're going to leave this checkbox at uh, Windows 10 or later domain device devices and we're going to checkbox our forest here that we have for this environment. We're going to click on add and we're simply going to put in our enterprise admin credentials for this forest. All right, and this is just telling you if you don't have the enterprise admin credentials, you can run this script, but we're not going to worry about that because we do. All right, then we'll select configure. All right, so that's done now as well. And we'll briefly pause. The very last thing I want to do here is configure device right back. So again, this is going to be uh, so that we can one, uh, join devices that are in our local domain. We just configure the hybrid join. So devices that are local will now be pushed up into Azure AD for the hybrid join. But when I think about autopilot and I getting, uh, I'm getting new devices from my OEM provider, registering them in the autopilot service, when we complete the out-of-box experience, I want to register that device not only with Azure Active Directory, but I want that to write back down into uh, this environment as well too. That's the overall goal. So again, one more time here, we'll click on Azure AD Connect. And we'll go back into device options and click Next and we'll authenticate again here. All right, and then I'll get my prompt for MFA. Prove that. And then we'll configure device right back. Select your forest and location from the available drop-down environments. 
and then once again providing the enterprise admin credentials and then we'll wait for this to load here alright and it's just giving us a list of things that it's going to do so we can click on configure all right so now that is complete so those are the basic steps that we need to complete in the local environment and now we're going to switch to the cloud environment here to finish things up so what we want to do here is a couple of different things so one of which we're going to need to create a profile here for the domain join so what we'll do is go under the windows section here and we're going to go under uh, compliance pro or configuration profiles and we're going to go ahead and add a new one here and we're just going to call it hybrid join and under platform we'll select windows 10 and later and under profile type we're going to select domain, domain join so the settings that come up here um, you can define what you want the computer name prefix to be you can define the domain name and again this has to match the fully qualified domain name in your local environment and the organizational unit uh, you need to grab the path there so if you don't know what this is, I would click on View under Active Directory Users Computers and look at Advanced Features. Um, and then you can right click on this and click on Properties. And by doing so, I don't remember which one it's in here. It's under Attribute Editor. So the Distinguish Name is what you can copy. Click on OK. And I'll just minimize this and we'll paste this in here. That looks good, so we'll click on OK. Scope tags, um, applicable rules, anything for, for additional filtering. I'm not going to go over that in this video. Um, most cases, you're just going to leave the, the settings there. So you'll create this, and now we need to assign it. So what I've done behind the scenes here is I've created a group called Hybrid Join. And I've added a device that I've uh, uploaded from the Windows hard or hardware ID um, section of there. So I went under, and I'll show you that here in a second, actually. Um, so I'll go under and I'll select assigned to a certain group. Actually, I can assign it to these scopes, but I want this to be a particular subset. So I'm going to look for hybrid join. And that's where I've got my devices that I do want to hybrid join and click on save and I'll go back here and I see like if I need to review the properties or not or anything like that and now this is configure there's one group assigned and that's good so just to show you guys what I did here is under groups I went under the hybrid I created one security group and I made it um, a member here this particular device that I've uploaded uh, from grabbing its hardware ID and pushing it into the autopilot service I could have made this a dynamic group and I could have tagged a certain uh, group ID uh, from the device itself if you want to make this even more automated for your deployment, uh, you can look at that. But if you go under Windows Enrollment here and look at Devices, this is where I uploaded the hardware ID here for this particular device. And I've got it listed here. Um, and this is where I'm talking where you could apply a group tag and it could have been dynamically joined. I manually assigned it to that group of hybrid uh, join, but it doesn't have to be. Can be more automated than that so just wanted to show you guys that um, one of the other things that we need to do here is create our hybrid join deployment profile so we'll go under here we'll click on create profile 
and we're just going to call it hybrid join and for this setting we do want to convert all target devices to autopilot and um, good use case for that like I just showed you I uploaded the hardware ID from an existing device and it's not yet in the autopilot service because I haven't enrolled it into Intune uh, or anything like that so I do want to convert it uh, whenever I assign it so here we're going to leave deployment mode at user driven we're going to select hybrid Azure AD join we're going to hide these settings here. We're going to leave this. We're going to allow the UB experience for white glove. And underneath here, I'm just going to find United States. I guess I can't type. English is what I'm looking for. And we'll say yes, automatically apply that. And then it's telling you here that for the hybrid join, you can't apply the device name template because it's going to take the one from the profile, which makes sense. So here I'll select my group and I'll select hybrid join. It's got my device in there. And just a summary of what we're including here. We've got our hybrid as our D join. We've got our user driven mode. We're allowing white glove. Got a right group in there, it looks good. So we'll create the profile and this will load up here and you'll just have to refresh here to fully see it. And it populated there before I hit refresh. So we'll go back to deployment profiles again and it does have it assigned, so that's good. And it's got the assigned device in there already. That was pretty quick, so Sometimes this does take some time to propagate from what I've seen, but that was relatively fast just from the deployment perspective to show this in here. If this device doesn't show up right away, that's part of that group. Um, be patient, I would say, wait five, 10 minutes. Um, from my experience, it's it's usually not that fast, but that was, that was good. Um, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna test all this out. So we have a device here that I've, this is the device of the hardware ID that you just saw in there. So we're gonna boot it up here and we're gonna go through the uh, autopilot experience. Oh, and one more thing that I forgot to do here. If I refresh, this is updating. Let me go back in here. I just wanna create a more white gloved experience for the user. So what I'll do is go under enrollment. I'll click on devices. And this is still updating. I should give it a few minutes here. But I want to assign it to a particular user. And that is me. And then I want to just customize the name here. So when they boot up the device, or when it boots up, it's just going to say, hey, Nick, let's get things ready for you. Type in your password. So we'll save and let's refresh. This is gonna take, let me just, I'm just gonna give this some time, but it did capture my name and save that correctly. Um, so I would recommend uh, waiting until this says assigned before actually going through the out of box experience. Or maybe just in general, just waiting uh, like 10 minutes or so just for things to propagate fully. I'd like to do that for my testing just to make sure that it's not just me. So I'm gonna briefly pause while that happens and be right back. Back here and now we have it as assigned. So that looks good. And if I click here, I've got my name listed as well too, assigned to the user who's licensed with Intune. And now I'm gonna pop into this device and just start it up. So it'll go through uh, the out of box experience here uh, as soon as it connects to the internet. So either if you have an ethernet connection or if you're running off the switch or device or Wi-Fi network or something like that, it'll run through and um, go through this experience. So we'll see it pop up here in just a minute.
So now we're prompted with our company branding and our directory ID there, and we're just asked to type in our password. So we'll go ahead and do that. And if you've enabled MFA for your sign in uh, or to register a device, you'll get the MFA prompt here and you'll need to approve that. It's a good security concern. Um, if you are doing this, if you're pushing out access to corporate data and things of that nature to have the user um, enroll in MFA, because again, if that user's password is compromised, they could technically uh, enroll their credentials in any device and have the company apps and policies and data pushed down um, and have access to that on any device itself, not just the computer that is supposed to be for the end user. So we're going to let this load here. So the device is still setting up here, but I want to show you a couple of different things that are going on behind the scenes. And this will load up and then push down all the policies, apps, everything like that. But a couple of different pieces there. If we pop back into our DC here, you'll notice that in our OU that we configured, the device has shown up here. It's got our custom naming convention. So I took our name and applied and appended a random number and letters on the end of it there. You again could change this up um, from the domain profile that we created within this portal. Um, but this is something where it's already joined now and it's getting the group policies pushed down to it as well too and it fully boots up. And back in the uh, 365 endpoint manager, if we go under all devices, you'll notice here, um, one, sometimes it pops up like this at first as well too, where it has MDM config manager agent. Um, and this is just thinking about it, doing a, a hybrid deployment. Where if we also go under windows, um, this is showing it here as well too. And this will fully load up and um, it should grab the full device name there. And then, like I said, if we have anything that we've applied to this device as well too, or the particular user, uh, such as our RMM software or Office Suite, that will begin to install as well too. Um, so a couple different pieces will begin to flow down after it's being configured here um, and it fully, fully pushes down completely. Um, so this, again, should be switching to MDM pretty soon here uh, with the full device name. Uh, but the main thing that I wanted to see was that it was successfully joined uh, to our OU there as well. So uh, that's everything I wanted to show you guys. If you guys have any questions or, or comments, feel free to put them on the video below. Thanks.